Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. Heavy water. All right, what part are we up to now? I don't know, like part four or something. If you've seen the other three or so videos on the heavy water series, you'll know that what I'm doing right now is I'm distilling the heavy water, uh, the, or the water that's concentrated in deuterium, um, to make it nice and pure so we can put it back into another electrolysis cell and continue electrolyzing down. So I've got here, we're down to around, I think it was 600 milliliters worth of uh, concentrated deuterium in water. Uh, and once we're finished distilling, we should be able to reduce that down to 400 milliliters and then just continue going from there. So what I've got here is just a solution of sodium carbonate uh, which should be able to be electrolyzed nice and slowly by my power supply. I can't actually remember what we were doing last time. I think uh, we'd been electrolyzing with this jar for a while with some sodium carbonate solution and then I reached the point of uh, saturation with that sodium carbonate and so I had to had to redistill and I think we had problems with that last time because uh, the salt, the sodium carbonate, uh, wouldn't actually dehydrate in uh, my distillation setup. So it was quite tricky because uh, all of the sodium carbonate that I'd used as an electrolyte had actually absorbed uh, nearly half of the water that we'd collected, uh, which is quite a substantial amount. It was a lot of work to make just this 600 milliliters. And so what I ended up doing is I reacted the sodium carbonate with some uh, sodium bisulfate, which uh, turned it into sodium sulfate which I was then able to dehydrate much easier because I looked it up and apparently the temperature you, that you need to uh, heat sodium carbonate to in order to completely dehydrate it is like over 300 degrees or something whereas sodium sulfate uh, pretty much dehydrates at the boiling point of water which is much easier to do. So I dehydrated all that uh, sodium sulfate, collected all the water and the remainder of that is in here. The rest of it is in the distillation apparatus and I've put a little bit in to the electrolysis jar ready to go. So in a few more minutes maybe I'll add the rest of our distillate and we'll be able to start electrolyzing that down. I'm only going to put 300 milliliters in there for this one and then just electrolyze that down to 200 and then I'll do the same for the next 300 milliliters just so it's nice and even for the next stage. Honestly, it's been over a full year since I started this bloody heavy water concentrating and we're getting, we're getting very close to the end. So um, I'm quite excited. Like we started off with 20, 22 liters of regular water and now we're down to 600 mils. So we're so close. Okay, the distillation is done and we've got all the water we need in there. Uh, I don't know what I told you about the concentration of the deuterium last time. I think I was probably wrong about that, but anyway, I've redone the maths, and by the time we reach that line, all right, we should reach the point, sorry, my hands are a little bit shaky, uh, we should reach the point where the water that's in the jar uh, is approximately 20 times the normal concentration of deuterium. Anyway, we've got the sodium carbonate solution in, so uh, we'll put the jar down in this bucket and we will start electrolyzing again. So our solution is now down in the bucket. Uh, you can see that just uh, electrolyzing away. Uh, the current, I'll show you that, is really not starting out very high. It's like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 uh, amps. And that's because uh, I haven't added very much electrolyte. I've only added two like teaspoons of sodium carbonate. Uh, that's just so that we, when we distill it next, we don't have to dehydrate too much salt because it is kind of annoying to do. Hopefully in a week or so, this will be reduced to 200 milliliters and then we'll do the same for all the water that we've got over here. So I'll see you in maybe a couple of weeks time when that is all electrolyzed down. Uh, oh, wait a sec, I almost forgot. Uh, I got a bunch of solar panels, which is pretty cool. Like, look at all these. Um, I got four of these. I don't know actually what these ones are. These ones look kind of weird, but um, these are all 60 watts each. 
these are all like 80 watts and uh, I don't know about this one this one looks a little bit dodgy but I don't know, I'm pretty sure it still works uh, and these ones another 60 watts each and so I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with all these yet but I have a lot of solar power to use for whatever and so I was thinking actually if I just grabbed one of these and uh, took it out put it in the Sun uh, maybe a bit later we could just directly power the um, the electrolysis using using solar power rather than this computer power supply uh, what I'm actually waiting for is a current controlled boost converter or buck converter sorry uh, in the mail uh, when that arrives maybe I'll set up one of these solar panels uh, connect it to the buck converter and then just directly run the um, electrolysis every day when the sun's out. Two weeks of electrolysis later and we have finally reached the stage where we can put all of our concentrated deuterium water into the one Vegemite jar. So that's 400 milliliters there and we've got it at, at a concentration of around about maybe a bit more than 0.3 percent deuterium. So I'll just continue Electrolyzing this down, we'll get it right down to maybe 100, 200 milliliters, and then maybe we might have to move it into a smaller jar to uh, continue the electrolysis. And that is happily electrolyzing away at about two amps. So that should be done. Well, not done, it should be down to 200 milliliters in hopefully around 10 days. So I'll see you then. Look, it's been a lot more than 10 days, but uh, my estimates are always pretty bad when it comes to how quick things are going to be. Anyway, we've electrolyzed down a little bit further than uh, the point where we've got 300 milliliters left, so we're making good progress. But more excitingly, uh, finally, this uh, buck converter that I ordered online uh, came in the mail. So now what I'm doing right now, instead of using this computer power supply, I've got uh, power coming in from uh, this solar panel which I told you about before. I've got a few more just uh, up against the wall there. Uh, so we've got all the power coming in from this solar panel and it's all going straight into the um, electrolysis jar. Uh, so that's excellent. It's working really well. I uh, should have done it a lot earlier. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of this stuff into its own little box, make a really nice little setup. Uh, so that we can monitor the voltage and the current coming in from the, the solar panels and also uh, hook it up so that we can get power from the solar panels and from the power supply. So like during at night uh, we're not going to get any power off the solar panels so we might as well uh, hook it up so that we can get power from both. And would you look at that, that is a cardboard masterpiece if I've ever seen one. Very nice. So now it's all done. This is our box containing the buck converter and the voltage and current meter. Uh, so on the input side, what we've got is we've got two leads going to the positive uh, input and two leads going to the negative input. That's so we can connect both the computer power supply and uh, the input from the solar panel in. And then I've got two diodes here. So whichever one of the two, either the computer power supply or the solar panel, uh, whichever one has the highest voltage currently, like if we connect this up to five volts on the computer power supply, then all the time that the um, solar panel is putting out more than five volts, it'll take power from the solar panel, which I think is really good because then during the day we'll be taking power from the solar panel and during the night we'll be taking power from the computer power supply and when, the, uh, when it's cloudy uh, in here, you can see I've got these this little hole so that we can get a screwdriver in there and adjust the voltage and current with those uh, little potentiometers in there and then we've just got the output which we'll put straight into the electrolyzer. So the solar panel is uh, set up. The only place that is uh, well sunny at this time of the day. Uh, we've got the power from that coming straight in towards the desk. So. That's our solar power coming in there. I'll connect it up to this power box that I just made and uh, we'll connect that up to the, the cell. And connect it up to power. It's working perfectly. You can see 
we're getting voltage on the output straight from the solar panel. So I'll also connect up uh, the second input to our computer power supply and that way uh, once we connect this to the cell uh, we'll be able to run off the solar power when we actually have solar power and we'll run off the computer power supply when we can't get enough power from the solar panel. And there we go, all set up. We've got power input from the solar panel and we've got power input from the uh, computer power supply. Uh, I've set the thing so that it's got uh, a maximum current of 2 amps and a maximum voltage of 7 volts and that's all going into our electrolytic cell. Uh, so while we've got solar power, we'll be running at 2 amps. Uh, the output of the computer power supply, however, is only 5 volts and because this is only a buck converter, when we're not getting solar power, we'll only be able to uh, give out 5 volts, which is alright, that's what I've been running it at so far. That is excellent. Making deuterium from nothing but sunlight right now. All of that energy, because it's higher than 5 volts, 5 volts is the amount that we're um, getting out of the computer power supply. Seeing as we've got more than 5 volts out in the power supply, all of that energy is coming straight from our solar panel. So what I'll do is just every day put the solar panel out and we should be finished electrolyzing in no time. You know what else is really cool? I didn't even realize it did this, but you see that red light in there? I'm assuming what that actually does is tell us whether we're in constant current or constant voltage mode, but seeing as when we're on solar power we'll be using constant current mode and when we're on uh, the computer power supply power we'll be using constant voltage mode we can actually tell using that LED uh, whether we're using solar power or whether we're using the computer power so if we disconnect uh, the solar power all right oops, no never mind let's hold that so it doesn't reconnect you'll notice that the LED is now green so I think that's pretty cool that while the LED is green we're using power from the power supply and when the LED is red just reconnect that. There we are. We're using solar power. That's pretty cool. So another couple of weeks in, uh, we are down to 200 milliliters. Roundabout is that uh, volume right there. So that's even more exciting than our last milestone, 400 milliliters. Uh, and we are getting down to the point where I'm starting to worry about the fact that the surface area of the electrodes touching the water isn't uh, it's not very high so um, we've got a, quite a high current density on all of those electrodes which isn't the best thing I'm pretty sure that at a at a higher current density then we get less separation between the, uh, the hydrogen and the deuterium so a solution for that I was gonna build a another cell but then I thought I might as well keep using this one and so what I've come up with is this little container which I can just put inside uh, this big jar here and this will hold a lot less water but will have a higher water level so that the the amount of water in here will um, contact more of the electrodes which is good we can keep running it at a steady rate of around two amps and uh, in this container uh, which will sit inside it uh, we'll just keep electrolyzing down until we have I don't know quite a small amount of water so I've managed to transfer a little bit under 100 mils of our uh, concentrated heavy water into this container. I did spill like one drop, which is a bit annoying. Anyway, I'll go ahead and put this container in the jar and then the electrodes should be contacting much more water. Uh, at two amps, which is what we're probably gonna be running this at, um, we should be able to halve the volume of this in about three days. And now, all put back together, you can see the smaller container on the inside uh, and you can even see the water level uh, of the water inside that container. So that's uh, quite nice to be able to monitor how well that's going. Uh, I've left the rest of the water in out here just so that we can uh, keep that inner cell cool because uh, seeing as we've got a smaller volume, it's going to heat up quite a bit quicker. Uh, and we want that thermal conductivity to be outside uh, or to conduct from the outside to right in the inner container from the uh, the cool water bath that I'm going to have around it. I've just put it in and uh, it seems to be electrolyzing away nicely. Uh, you can see we've got around 2 amps at a little bit over 5 volts and that's really good because before we were getting 2 amps at 
like six and a half volts. That just proves how much better it is to increase the surface area of the electrodes. I'm going to keep uh, electrolyzing just like this. Um, we'll reduce whatever's in that small container down to half of what it was, so around 50 milliliters, and then I'll swap that out for the other 100 milliliters that's in the jar, and then that total 100 milliliters that we'll have at the end of that, I'll once again reduce the volume by half, so we'll have 50 milliliters of water at the end left over, uh, and that should take, I don't know, I've calculated it to take nine days, but it's probably gonna take uh, two weeks or more, considering how long these things always seem to take, something always goes wrong. Uh, but I think that's enough for this video, so hopefully in a week or two I'll put out another video, uh, the next stage of the heavy water enrichment. So, till then, see you later.